Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. I hope everybody is having a great week and a great day and looking forward to the weekend. Uh, I have been excited about this stream for several days, trying to put it together, and uh, I hope it goes well. It is a, it is a bit of a test because I've never done this kind of stream before where we've actually tried to play the game. The first one is going to be from the Red Box starter set from 4th edition. This is actually for the Essentials uh, kit that came out in 2010, um, but we're going to use it uh, with the core rules. Uh, it's not really critical that we run it with Essentials, even though that was the box that it came with. So uh, we'll run, run on that one first and the reason i picked that one is it's a pretty basic uh encounter pretty standard for dungeons and dragons uh fighting a few goblins um and kind of a good way to just kind of get a feel for characters and see how it goes we're gonna these are both combat encounters so uh that's the that's the easiest thing for us to run i think uh but i do you know if this is something that works out down the road we may try to do something at least maybe we could do some exploration possibly skill challenges or something like that but uh for now these are just combat encounters so um we'll keep it again pretty basic um but i think it'll be a lot of fun the characters are from the keep on the shadow fell module that it came with a quick start guide that included five pre-generated characters i'm going to be using four of those characters for this uh if you have not downloaded those or you want to and follow along uh i have a link down to the keep on the shadow fell module from drive through rpg it is free you can download it through drive through rpg i made a couple modifications just to the uh i added the character names to the to the characters we'll be using uh those uh customized character sheets are on my website and that link is also down in the description so if you want to grab copies of the character sheets for yourself uh you can get those out of the description so uh, feel free to look down there and check out those links if you're not subscribed to the channel please subscribe click the like button and uh um, that'll help me with the youtube algorithm so please by all means do that uh, if you're looking for any other ways to help support the channel uh check out all those links down in the description there's lots of different things that you can do to help uh, support the work and uh, support the channel so thank you for that and here we have our, so we'll, we'll go through the uh, characters first. And again, if you want to grab the character sheets, they, the links to that are down in the description. The first one that we have is Keldrek. Uh, Keldrek is a dragonborn paladin. Uh, and it's got 27 hit points, armor class of 20. Uh, basic attack is longsword, has a ranged attack with a javelin. At will powers are holy strike, valiant strike. Uh, encounter power is radiant smite. Daily power is paladin's judgment. Um, and then there's several special features that he has. Uh, the first one is lay on hands. Um, one thing to point out with lay on hands is that... Uh, it says that you, it's an at-will power with special in parentheses, and then for special it says you can use this power once per day, which doesn't really make it sound like much of a uh, uh, at-will power. It sounds more like a daily power. Uh, the reason is just uh, the, the, the special in the core rules is that you can use this power a number of times per day equal to your wisdom modifier. So if your wisdom modifier was three, you would be able to use it three times per day. If it was two, you could use it two times per day. In this case, uh, Keldrick's wisdom modifier is one, so uh, he can only actually use it once per day, which makes it more like a daily power. But that's why it has the uh, at-will special uh, once per day. Next, we have Dragon Breath uh, is the Dragonborn racial feature. Encounter power is Channel Divinity with Divine Strength and then also has Divine Challenge as an at-will power. Moving on to the next one is our Halfling Rogue is Lyra. 25 hit points, armor class of 16, and then has a dagger for both her melee and ranged basic attacks. Uh, second chance is a Halfling racial power. At-will powers are Deft Strike and Sly Flourish. And counter power of poison positioning strike and daily power of trick strike she's got several different class features that are pretty helpful plus three bonus to armor class against opportunity attacks uh the really good one is first strike where if she rolls a high initiative then uh she gets combat advantage against any creatures that have not yet acted in the encounter so when she has combat advantage she gets to use the uh sneak attack dice it indicates that they are 2d8 points of damage in addition to the regular damage uh the reason it's 2d eights instead of 2d sixes which would be the normal damage is because she has the backstabber feet uh which raises her sneak attack dice from d sixes up to d eight so that's why uh, she gets a little extra something there next one is elara our human wizard 
uh, 23 hit points, armor class of 14, has a quarter staff for the basic melee attack, uh, and then magic missile can be used as a ranged basic attack. For the at will powers, she has magic missile, uh, which does require an attack roll. Unlike um, other editions, magic missile in the core rules for fourth edition requires that you make an attack roll. The damage for it is a little bit more. It's 2d4 plus four. Uh, so that's a little more than what you get in some of the other editions. When the essentials line came out, that is one of the things they changed. Magic missile once again was an auto hit spell. Uh, but here we're using the core rules and magic missile does require an attack roll. Uh, other at wills are ray of frost and scorching burst. Uh, encounter power of burning hands, daily power of acid arrow, and sleep. Uh, so uh, as a wizard, she has a spell book, which means for daily power, she actually has two spells in that spell book, uh, which is another decision that we have to make is which of those spells do we want her to have prepared for today. Uh, as a wizard, she gets some cantrips as well, ghost sound and light. And then finally, we have our dwarf fighter, Haldor. Haldor has 31 hit points and a 17 armor class. His basic attack is a maul, and his ranged basic attack is a dagger. At will powers are cleave and reaping strike, and counter power is spinning sweep, and daily power is brute strike. The feat of power attack is pretty cool because when he makes a melee attack, he can choose to give up some accuracy by taking a minus two penalty on the attack roll, and then if it hits, he gets a plus three bonus on the damage. So give up a little accuracy, get a little uh, extra on the damage. So... All right, so this this encounter is, like I said, it's from the Red Box starter set. So this is the first encounter that's in the Dun Dungeon Master's book from that starter set, and it's the first one that's actually laid out like a typical encounter in 4th edition. So you got the name of the encounter, and then it tells you the encounter level and how many XP it's going to be worth once they complete the encounter. And then you go into a whole bunch of stuff about the setup. So you see that it says there's two goblin cutthroats and two gray wolves. Uh, it does provide a lot more information than you would generally get with uh, an encounter in a regular adventure module because this one is guiding you through how to be a dungeon master. So there's a lot of information provided in here about how you do things that isn't necessarily provided in, an, in a regular encounter. So this one is very educational in nature. Uh, so, but it tells you you got two goblin cutthroats, two gray wolves, and you can see on the right side of it is the monster stat blocks for the goblin cutthroats and the gray wolves. So you don't have to flip back and forth to the monster manual. You don't have to flip to the back of the book. The uh, monster stat blocks are right in the encounter and everything is right there in front of you for everything that you need. And then you get a bit of box text for uh, for the dungeon master to read. So the goblin wear was too much for just one of you to handle, but there's strength in numbers. Now your group is ready to handle the goblin's menace and retrieve the merchant's stolen box. In the town of Fallcrest, you met up with four other with other adventurers, each of you brave and talented enough to take on the swarm of goblins. You're on a lone road approaching the site of the goblin lair. The distant howl of wolves has followed you since you set out from Fallcrest, and now you see two of the beasts emerge from behind some rocks along the side of the road. The wolves growl menacingly. With a shrill cry, two goblins appear from behind a ruined tower and rush to attack. So with that said, the next step is to place the hero tokens on the encounter map uh, in an area that is marked on that map. You can see there's a place that says where place character tokens here. Uh, and then to also put the, uh, put the goblin tokens and the wolf tokens in the positions indicated on the map. And there is our map. You can see the area where the hero tokens are supposed to go. So we will go ahead and put our hero tokens there. And then we will add in the wolves and we will add in the goblins. Uh, and we're ready to start this encounter. So all four of our heroes are there, the wolves and the goblins are in position, and we can go ahead and start the encounter. So you can see in, I'll bring up the encounter again, you can see it's the next thing it says is to roll initiative. Uh, so for each character, um, we'll roll initiative and we will add their initiative bonus. And then the monsters, we will roll initiative for the goblins and we will roll initiative for the wolves. And we will start with Keldrek and we'll see what his initiative is going to be. And he gets a 10. Now Keldrek has a, has an, oops, wrong button. Keldrek has a, initiative bonus of plus zero so Keldrek is not going to get anything on top of their on top of his 10 for his initiative so I'm just going to make a note um, 
up top that he has a 10 for his initiative and we'll just leave it at that then our next hero is lyra die she gets a 17 with her plus four that is going to give her a 21. next is alara roll her die that's a 10 that's going to give her a 16. then finally from the heroes haldor roll d20 for him and that is going to be uh 11. so the goblins it'll be a 16 plus 5. oh that we actually are going to have a tie see i I, th I was so confident that lyra would would be good but 16 plus 5 is a 21. and then our last uh monster is the wolves 17 and our wolves have an initiative bonus of six and well it looks like they're going to end up going first all right so there we go we have our initiative order wolves will go first followed by lyra the goblins elara haldor and keldrak i put the hit points on the screen so we can keep track of the hero hit points now the next thing in the encounter is the tactics and this is this is the part that i love about fourth edition that i don't feel we get enough of in fifth edition uh, is the tactics. And, and I will admit in, in some of the fourth edition encounters, not all of them have as detailed tactics as we have here, but to me, it's really helpful when you kind of have an idea what the monsters are going to do during the encounter. And fourth edition was really good about having a section about the tactics. Uh, and in this case, it tells you what the goblins will do on their first turn, what the wolves will do on their first turn, and then what the goblins and wolves will do on later turns. So it goes into a lot of detail. And then the next section after that is the monster statistics, which we've kind of talked about. Uh, so we have the monster stat blocks right here in the document. We don't have to refer to the monster manual. We don't have to flip to the back of the book. They're all right there. Uh, and we have the features of the area, which you get in uh, your fifth edition adventures too. We'll generally have that. All right. So with all of that said, it is time for the wolves to go. Per the combat tactics on the wolves first turn, they each move as many as eight squares toward one of the adventures in the back of the party. They are coming from opposite sides and they try to flank their chosen target, positioning themselves opposite sides or opposite corners of the character's square. If they accomplish this, they get combat advantage. They attack and then both retreat, shifting four squares away after making their attacks. So let's go ahead and Wolf 1 has moved into position and I'm going to have Wolf 1 actually make their attack uh, right away. So plus seven versus armor class. Let's go ahead and see how, how he does. So we'll roll our D 20, 14 plus seven is going to be a 21. I'm pretty sure that is going to hit. Uh, this will just be a straight one D six plus five and we get a four. So plus five, that is going to be nine points of damage on Haldor. But it's now our turn for the next wolf. One, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, no problem getting into position. Uh, fourth edition diagonal squares count the same as regular uh, vertical and horizontal movements. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So now wolf number two is in position. Plus seven versus armor class. And then it'll be a 1d6 plus five damage. So... Let's go ahead and roll our, our attack. 12 plus seven is going to be a 19. Haldor's armor class was 17. So that is going to be a hit. And then, so that'll be a one D six, another four plus five is going to be another nine points of damage for Haldor. Uh, Lyra is hero number two. She doesn't have any of the creatures around her. So she has pretty much free movement to go wherever she wants. So we are going to use Sly Flourish on this wolf. First thing we got to do, roll our d20. Please roll well. 13 plus 8, that is going to be a 21. So that will definitely hit the wolf. So 21 versus the wolf's armor class, uh, which uh, just for reference, if anybody's keeping score at home, is uh, 16. So... Uh, definitely hit there and now we get to do all this damage so uh that'll be a 1d4 plus 2d8 for the sneak attack damage so let's go ahead and roll those it does work okay look at that all right we got a 
4 plus 6 plus 3, that is going to be 13 points of damage, plus the uh, the Sly Flourish also gives plus 7, so we're at 13 plus 7, that's 20 points of damage on Wolf number 2. So she's going to spend her action point, and we'll go ahead and she's going to uh, do another Sly Flourish, uh, because... She'll use a standard action, and she is still in combat advantage, so she'll get all the same bonuses as what she had before. So um, let's go ahead and roll our d20. <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> I don't think that could have gone any better. We'll do the max on the dagger. So the dagger is just a 1d4. Um, so that'll be 4 damage plus seven and then and then we can roll the sneak attack damage again to see so let's just go ahead and roll the sneak attack so 10 well there we go this this wolf is done so let's take a look at the goblins and see what they have to offer here so we'll start with one um one two three four five six so let's go and see how we do. 12 plus 4 is 16 against Haldor. And Haldor has an armor class of 17. So so Haldor, so this will miss this will miss. It was a 16. Haldor has an armor class of 17, so it is going to to uh be a miss. So goblin number one, two, three, four, five. So goblin number two can get into position and can attack uh, um, Lyra. So that is going to be a nine. Um, and then the goblin has a plus six for that. So nine plus six is 15. Lyra's armor class is 16. So that, that one is going to hit. So we got our, we got to use our tie scenario after all. So, uh, so that will hit and the damage for um, for the dagger is going to be 1d6 plus 5. Uh, there is no combat advantage. So uh, 1d6 plus 5. For that. Rolling 1d6. And we get a 4 plus 5 which means Lyra is going to take nine points of damage. So let me go ahead and jot that down. Nine points of damage drops her down to 16. Did I not add right? The bonus, did I roll a nine on my 20? Let me, oh, I can look at the history. Let me see. Yeah, you're right. Holy crap. I, <laughs> I don't even know what to tell you. <laughs> I, I don't know how I had in my head that nine plus six equals 16, but so, uh, all right, forget, forget all of that. They missed. Okay. So never mind. We are now down to Ilara, our wizard. All right, let's do Ray of Frost. Uh, Ray of Frost has a, uh, it's going to be a plus four attack versus fortitude. So let me go ahead and get the character sheet out of the way. Oops, I, nope, that's not what I want to do. I'm going to flip back to you over here. Uh, so it's going to be a plus four attack versus fortitude. Um, let's go ahead and roll that one. Oh yeah, that's going to be good. So 18 plus four. All right, check my math. I'm, I'm questionable apparently. Uh, 22 is what I'm thinking. Let me break out my abacus and see if I got that right. Uh, 22 versus the fortitude of the goblin. I'm going after goblin number one, by the way, that was the plan. Uh, 22 versus the fortitude of 13. So, uh, yeah, so that is definitely a hit. And then the, the damage on that one is going to be 1d6 plus four and that goblin is going to be slowed. So let me go ahead and do the damage roll. Ah, it's not not ideal, but it is what it is. So, um, so 1d4, we only rolled a one plus four. 
So goblin number one has taken a little damage, but not a whole lot. Yeah, let's do that. Let's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to put her up here. That puts her out of range of this goblin as well. So that goblin would have to move in order to get closer. So um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that puts her out of range there. Definitely out of range of this one. So I think we're good. Uh, next, we have Haldor. Uh, so finally, he's the one that took, took all the damage to start. And now he finally gets a chance to return the favor. So we are going to do brute strike on wolf number one. Uh, I am very excited about this. So this will be a plus six versus the wolf's armor class. The wolf has an armor class of 16. So let's keep that in mind. The armor class is 16. We get a plus six. Oh, <laughs> man. Haldor is giving up his action point and rolling the D20. I don't know. <laughs> it was going to be amazing, but not on this turn. It's not. <clears throat> it is Keldrek's turn. So Paladin's Judgment, uh, daily power, 3d8 plus 4 damage, and uh, Haldor could spend a healing surge. So uh, we'd move uh, Keldrek right up there next to that wolf, deal with the wolf, and uh, and also heal Haldor in the process. So I think that one does make sense. Keldrek, uh, going to move here, just move up one square to get adjacent to Hal. Well, I mean, he's already adjacent to Haldor, but get adjacent to the, uh, wolf. Uh, and then the attack is a plus seven versus armor class. The armor class of the wolf is 16. Let's see what Keldrek can do. There we go. 15 plus seven. That is uh, 22. Well above 16. So we are good there. Uh, the damage uh, for that is going to be, uh, what was it again? 3d8 plus four damage. So we'll start with that. There we go. Uh, so that is a 14 plus four. That is 18 damage. He, uh, Haldor does get to spend a healing surge, so uh, can spend a healing surge. So Haldor will spend a healing surge, and just to, uh, I'll just bring that one up so that we can see it. Um, Haldor has a healing surge value is seven. He gets twelve surges per day, so that is going to restore um, seven hit points to Haldor. We are right back to the wolves. Round two, that was round one. Um, there's only one wolf left, uh, and obviously the wolf is going to do their bite. So the attack is going to be plus seven versus armor class. So let's see how the wolf does on this one. So 16 plus seven, that is going to hit. Boy, the one that we really wanted to hit is the one that missed. But uh, So the wolf is going to get Haldor again. And the damage for the wolf is uh, 1d6 plus 5. <laughs> Boy. Uh, so that is 9 points of damage. So Haldor just healed by 10 and now is going to take 9 damage. So, And uh, so that's that's the wolf. Uh, next, we're, we're with Lyra. So maybe Lyra can now show Haldor how to deal with stuff. She's going to attack goblin number two here using Sly Flourish. That gets a plus eight versus armor class. So let's see how she makes out. Nine plus eight is 17 um, against this goblin. The goblin's armor class is 15, so she is good. And then that's going to give 1d4 plus seven damage. Four, nice. Four plus seven. That's going to be 11 points of damage 
on that one. So very nice. So the goblins, uh, we still have both of them. We'll start with goblin one. Um, so yeah, so he can only move, um, and I'll just go ahead. And, so he can only actually move two spots and that's, so that's it. So there's no flanking or combat advantage going to be happening with him. So, uh, so I think, I think this goblin is going to be attacking Haldor then, uh, number four. Uh, so we'll do that one. I'm going to throw a dagger, uh, already threw one dagger and missed. So he only has one dagger left. Uh, and, but Haldor is only a few squares away. So he's within range and it's going to be a plus six versus Haldor's armor class. Uh, Haldor's armor class is 17. So plus, plus six versus 17. Man, these monsters are just rolling awesome. <laughs> I'm getting great rolls for everyone except for Haldor. It's crazy. So 17 plus seven is going to be 24. Uh, so no, no problem with a hit uh, for that one. Damage for that is going to be uh, 1d4 plus five on that one. So 1d4. Okay. It's one plus five. That's going to be six damage on Haldor. Uh, goblin number two uh, clearly is just going to take a stab at Lyra here. Short sword um, and is going to get a plus six versus Lyra, Lyra's armor class. Lyra has an armor class of 16. So plus six versus 16. Nine plus six is 15. And uh, so that is uh, that is not enough to hit Lyra's armor class of 16. So that goblin is going to miss. So we are up to Ilara's turn. So let's go with Ray of Frost again. Uh, that way we can deal some damage and uh, make sure that the goblin is actually slowed um, until the next turn. So plus four versus 13. No problem. 15 plus four, 19 uh, versus 13. So that gets us our damage. And then the damage for for ray of frost i believe it was a d d6 so 1d6 plus four five plus four is nine damage on goblin one and that brings us to haldor um the good news is that haldor has uh still yet to hit with his brute strike which means if we want to give it another go we could we could go ahead and do that um, and possibly try to finish off this wolf. So uh, if, if anybody's uh, up for that, I'm, uh, I think that's the way to go since he has actually still has the brute strike available to him. And we can try to see if we can get that third time's a charm for it. It's a plus six versus armor class. The armor class of the wolf is a 16 so a plus six versus 16 here we go come on haldor you can do it plus six 13 plus six is 19 versus a 16 armor class he did it yay <laughs> three tries but he got it done um and then the best part is that is going to be 6d6 plus 3 damage. So that's going to be fun to roll here. This is this is one of those ones where I would I I wish I was rolling actual dice because that's that would be a fun one to roll. So 6d6. All right. 23 plus 23 plus three is going to be 26 points of damage. Uh, and that is more than what that wolf had remaining. So that wolf is now done. And we still have Keldrick now. We'll move him. He'll kind of take the long way, but one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so that's his max movement. But then he gives up an opportunity attack right there which the uh, goblin gets to make a short sword attack. So it would be plus six versus Keldrick's armor class of 20. Yeah, okay, he's got a 20 armor class anyway. So 
plus six versus 20. Let's see. <laughs> That's, that is how this evening has gone for our heroes. So plus six, uh, 15 plus six is 21 versus a 20 armor class. So that is going to succeed. Uh, and that will deal a uh, 1d6 plus five damage. And that's going to be three plus five is eight points of damage. Uh, and Radiant Smite is going to be a plus seven versus armor class. And the armor class on the goblin is 15. So plus seven versus 15. Uh, just when we have a plan. That's what happens. All right. So swing and a miss on the Radiant Smite. Uh, Goblin 2 is marked at least, but uh, so it cannot attack Lyra. It's going to have to go after Keldrick. So that's at least something. Uh, now we're back to the wolves, but the wolves are all gone. So we got Lyra. Okay. Lyra now. Oh, Lyra has combat advantage, which means that she gets her sneak attack. So we'll go with Sly Flourish again. So, uh, plus eight versus armor class and the armor class is 15. So plus eight versus 15. Let's see what she got. Uh, it'll actually be plus 10, 16 plus 10, 26. No problem on that. So this is, yeah, she's going to clean up on this one. So, uh, it'll be max damage of one D four. So that's just a four plus seven is 11 plus she gets two D eight for the sneak attack. 10 so 10 damage plus 11 damage uh that uh goblin number two is done so goblin number two is toast and we are down to one goblin in this encounter next up in our initiative is the goblin who uh will likely at this point Oh, he is slowed still, so he can only move two spots. So uh, we'll have him move his two spots um, to go there. Uh, and he's going to throw a dagger at Haldor because Haldor is clearly struggling. Oh, you're right. He doesn't have any daggers. He already threw his daggers. Thank you, Joe. I am glad you were paying attention. So it doesn't matter. He missed anyway, but he didn't actually even have a dagger to throw. So, uh, so he had nothing, uh, to offer here. And now we are at Alara, Lara's turn and we have just one goblin now against our party of four and the wizard perhaps feels a little empowered to, uh, do a little something more. Uh, so let's see, what do we have that the wizard could try to do? So let's go for it. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put her up here instead. Um, that way she's not blocking anybody. I don't want anybody to have to go around, around her. So, uh, she's up there, and then it's gonna be a plus four versus reflex. Let me see what the goblin. The goblin's probably a pretty good reflex. Fourteen, plus four versus fourteen. So 16 versus 14. And so that is going to be 2d6 plus four fire damage. So 2d6 plus four. Four plus four is eight points of fire damage. Uh, so this goblin is, uh, is now officially bloodied. And... It is now up to our hero Haldor with his opportunity to finish off this, this final goblin uh, and get vengeance for the earlier uh, mishaps that he had. So uh, let's see. Let me pull up uh, Haldor's and we'll get here. Can have a look. 
five squares. One, two, three, four. There we go. One, two, three, four. So Haldor is now flanking this goblin. I am just going to roll the die. I'm just going for it. So we are doing a plus six versus armor class. And the armor class is 15, as we know. And let's have a look. Uh, plus, it's plus six. It's going to be plus eight, actually, because we have combat advantage. Nailed it. 17 plus eight. That is a 25. That is most definitely a hit. That is definitely a hit. And that is going to do 2d6 plus three damage. And that goblin's going to be knocked prone. Let's see how... We do with that seven plus three, you know, that, uh, that worked out pretty well. This goblin had eight hit points left and Haldor just did 10 points of damage. So that is about as good as it could have gone for Haldor, given the fact that he had made, uh, some pretty big misses early on. And, and there we go. Just like that, this, uh, we have dealt with the two goblins and the wolves and the party can continue on their way again thank you everyone i had a great time it was uh it, it went it went pretty well uh better than i was i feared i i worried that there was going to be uh, a lot of hiccups but i think it went really well and a lot of that's because of the the great feedback everybody had and i appreciate it all the all the input uh please do uh like the video um, and, uh, to make sure that we can help the algorithm as much as possible. If you have any thoughts about what we should do next week, uh, in it or anything we can do better, please leave those in the comments and I'd appreciate it. Uh, and then if you want to help the channel in any other way, check out the description. There's affiliate links in there that can help out. There's a newsletter you can sign up for all that stuff. So thank you everyone. Have a great evening, have a great week. And uh, I look forward to doing this again next time. So until then take care.